Hey everybody, Steve here, and we're talking about the Jesus Project 365 with Matthew chapter 10. We're finishing it up with verses uh, 26 to 42. Uh, we finished off, uh, or actually we're just continuing on with what Jesus said from uh, the earlier verses, talking about how uh, the disciples, he sends out the twelve, and how they're going to be betrayed, and how he gave them the authority to... to heal the sick and cast out demons and to preach the gospel um, you know just everything freely they receive now freely give and he says that uh, he's sending them out to be sheep among the wolves but he's going to protect them and he says when you're persecuted flee from one place and go to another and, and continue doing those same things well, it leads off at the last part and he says so don't be afraid of them there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be, me, be made known. When I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the housetops. This is an interesting verse, and what comes to mind is that there is no secret, um, special secret stuff that's hidden away from all the believers. Because um, what Jesus tells them... Uh, they were to go out and preach and we see that in God's word the same message that we're supposed to go out and preach and it's not some special revelation that false teachers and false prophets receive that that you know they can't tell everybody you know because that's not what God told them to do no rather we see the entire word of God here and that uh, boom there it is uh, you know this is what I tell you in the dark speak in the daylight what is whispered in your ear proclaimed from the housetops so in other words, Jesus doesn't hide his word from his children. And there's no hierarchy of children of God or believers. Uh, like, okay, well, this group over here, uh, they're not going to get it because they're just kind of like the, they're the, the everyday commoner believers, you know. And it's these people over here, the prophets and the, and the pastors, they get this and they can't, you know, this is special. You have to be one of these uh, to get this special revelation, but we can't tell the commoners what it is. We don't see that in God's word. We see the message that is to be preached and proclaimed as Jesus Christ. And it says, don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. You know, all these false teachers and false prophets, these religious leaders back in Jesus' day that would actually take the disciples, take the New Testament believers, and bring them before the synagogues and beat them and whip them and even uh, kill them to the, so that they're martyred for the cause of Christ. But what happens is that Jesus says, don't worry about that because your soul is eternal and where you're going to spend it is important. And the one who controls your soul, that's the one that you need to serve. And you can either serve God or you can serve mammon. Uh, it's one of the two. You can't serve both. You can't have... You can't serve the enemy and you can't serve God. And God holds, he is all power and all authority. And it talks about, you know, uh, aren't you worth more than a sparrow? And um, so don't be afraid for you're worth more than many sparrows. It says, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. Whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Has there ever been a time in our lives we know the word that Jesus gave his disciples when he sent them out. But in our lives, how do we apply that to us? Has there ever been a time when you thought that you were supposed to share the gospel or you were supposed to go talk to somebody because it was heavy on your heart and you didn't? You're going to be held accountable for that. I'm going to be held accountable for that. And if we fall short of God's perfection, we need to repent and confess and ask for his forgiveness for doing so. But we have to remember that we shouldn't make this a continuous type of thing where God and the Holy Spirit impresses upon us to go speak to somebody or pray with somebody or to just give the message of Jesus Christ. And we just kind of, eh, you know, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's the pastor's job. Uh, that's somebody else's job. That's that guy's job over there. Or that guy on the Internet, he's, he's real good at it. No, uh, it's you. You're the one who's going to be held accountable, same as I'm going to be held accountable. Uh, so let's not get to the point of where we play 
the religious leader, the fake Christian, the hypocrite who goes to church or Bible study or, or youth meeting, uh, you know, youth nights, and we disown Christ. We'll go and we'll talk about, we'll go to church and we'll do fun activities, but we won't acknowledge God to our friends or our coworkers or, you know, the people at school or whatever. Um, let's not get to the point of where we're getting so comfortable and relaxed in our religiosity that we actually disown the one who bought us. This is don't, uh, here's the, you now here's a real hard word from Jesus. He says, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to turn, he says, a man against his father, daughter against mother, mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Man's enemies will be members of his own household. We see this today not only between believers and unbelievers within a family, but also believers who follow Jesus Christ and those in that same family that are following false teachers and false prophets. Um, it's not about unity. It's not about, you know, let's all hug and, and get along despite that you believe that you don't believe or you believe in some false prophet or false teaching. Unity is never, never comes at the expense of God and his word and it never complacent when it comes to sin. Uh, anyone who loves his father or mother or son or daughter is not worthy of me. It says anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Think about what Jesus had to endure, the beatings, the shame, uh, the cat of nine tails, how he was subjected to such torture that he was unrecognizable. And then he took up his cross and then he carried it up, up to that mountain to where he was crucified. How many of us are willing to go through and examine ourselves, carry our cross, uh, buffet our bodies so that we're no longer a slave to sin but a slave to righteousness and we examine ourselves and we follow in the footsteps of Christ. It's, we're all guilty of that. But we need to press on and we need to ask Jesus to continue to open up our hearts and open up our minds and so that we can walk with him and put away the, the ways of the world and the ways of the flesh. It says, whoever finds his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. How many of us have really counted the cost? How many of us have really laid down our lives? Maybe we've laid down maybe an hour, maybe two hours on Sunday, maybe a couple hours on Bible study or youth night or something like that, or, or a couple couple hours at a Christian concert, but the rest of our lives, uh, we don't lose it for him because we keep that stuff close to, our, our, to the chest. We don't want to give that up to God. That's hard. He receives you, receives me, and he who receives me, receives the one who sent me. Um, so in a, in it talks about receiving a prophet, a prophet's reward, or a righteous. It says anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. This is where we have to get to the point of where we have to know God's word. We have to test everything in accordance with the whole counsel of God. And because we need to find out if a prophet is really a prophet or if he's a false prophet. If he's a righteous man or he's a minister of righteousness that is actually masquerading as a minister of righteousness. We have to be able to test these things to find out if people are real believers or if they're the fake hypocrite Christians. This is going to be huge coming up in the time. Even now, uh, we're seeing so many that are falling away from the faith and they're going into these different messages and they're following false prophets and false teachers. But according to them, well, I received this guy. He's a prophet, and he said he's a prophet, so I'm going to get a prophet's reward. Well, maybe what you're doing is you're not test everything against Scripture, and there's a problem with that because now you're not doing it because it's God's will, but you're doing it because you're going to get a reward. It's not about having that relationship with Jesus Christ. If anyone gives a cold cup of water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. So let us not lose the reward. Let us not forget God and his word and hide this in our hearts so we can test everything. Um, because there's coming a time, and it's even now, where it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And those who say, well, I'm a Christian, you better get down and get to the nitty gritty and say, tell me how you became a Christian. And it better line up with God's word. And if it doesn't, maybe there's a chance to minister. But anyway, that's it for uh, Matthew chapter 10. Take care. God bless. Peace.